Hey guys, I just got done talking to my buddy Ruben, the Blue Sky Prophet, who's on YouTube, but he hasn't put up his video, his video yet, but he's going to soon. Um, and he was encouraging me to talk about this stuff I've been thinking about. I've been thinking a lot about the human body, and um, I think that all fear is physical. I think it's all physical. I don't think there's such a thing as emotional fear. And I think that th I'm learning this through YouTube. I'm learning this through video communication. When I don't actually have someone in front of me that I'm talking to, I don't get nervous. In fact, I feel the moments when I would normally get nervous and I realize I'm not nervous at all. Like on video communication on MSN, and I'll just ask questions that I would otherwise in real life be afraid to ask because people get up and they get angry and they look at you and they say, fuck this, I'm not talking. Because we're all terrified of each other subconsciously. We don't realize it. Of course we're horrified. And, I, and maybe that comes from birth, Swen, like you said. We're, we live in, in the womb for nine months, six months of it. We're, apparently we're conscious. And then in this oneness, this amazing, genuine safe, beautiful experience with ambient noise and, and, and the occasional uh, presence of, of someone or something, but it's peace. And then one day, we're just ripped out of it into this horrifying reality. Horrifying. I've heard that Babies, uh, for the first three months of their life, it's like they're on LSD because everything they're seeing everything for the first time as if they're on a trip. I've never done LSD before, but I can imagine what that might be like. Amazing. And that's, I guess, the drug recreates that. But that's, I think, so the babies are experiencing everything for the first time. Like, everything we see, we just believe it as real. So that's why kids are so impressionable, you know. And I think this is the reason why we don't remember our, our early childhood. I think it, we're repressing it. I think we can remember everything. I think we can remember the womb. But I think we're repressing it because of the, the fear of birth, because of that terrifying, terrifying experience and the terrifying shit that comes after that. We don't want to ever go back to that. Ever. Touch on to that. I remember when I was very young, in my room, I remember the crib and my mom holding me and a lamp, the ambient lamp. It was the, the overhead light was off, but there was a lamp in the corner by the window. There's a little room, and um, the lamp had colors on it. And it was just a glowing yellow, and I can remember it. And I think she was singing to me, or just holding me. I must have been like two or one. I was in a crib. I remember the crib. And then I thought, maybe I remembered it because I remembered her holding my little brother, Max, two years younger. But but I remember it. I'm not going to... No, it's a memory I have. I remember it. I saw, I saw it. I was there. I felt it. But it's like, we can't help but be terrified of everything. Because when something happens for the first time, it's scary. That's human nature. That's the curse. So we're fucking terrified of everything. Because we, everything happened for the first time. So we're scared of everything. Human beings are scared of everything. I'm scared of everything. The more I experience it, the less the fear goes away. But then, okay, that all that being said, I'm scared of everything in the physical realm. I'm not fucking scared of video communication. I'm not scared of people over the internet. If they call my house, then I'm gonna get scared, but I'm not scared of people over the internet. This takes the fear out of communication. Our body is a mask. Our body clouds it's just, it's, it's, it's built to cloud our consciousness. It's, it's the, we did the best job we could putting this thing together, however it got put together, or however we morphed into this, or we, not morphed into it, but evolved into this throughout the hundreds of thousands of years. 
it's a pretty useful tool to communicate. We've even developed language so that we can communicate. I just watched a little bit of Waking Life, by the way. I'm going to watch the rest of it after this video. But this woman was saying how you know we, we created language so that we could communicate, so that we could express the feeling, the isolate. We had all this. We lived in isolation, and it's like we had to figure out a way to get out of this isolation. So it was just an easy, natural thing to do: create words, cup, dog, come here, all that stuff. And now we can communicate. And now I think we're taking it to the next level for the first time in the history of humanity, as far as I know, as far as any of us know. They've never had an internet before. And I think we're taking it to this, for the first time in humanity, we're taking the physical fear out of communication. I would like to have a, a conversation with President Bush on video chat. I don't see why I wouldn't be able to. There's no fear. The only reason he's surrounded by secret servicemen is because they think someone's going to carry a gun in there. And, you know, that's the fear. It's fear. It's, it's human fear. Physical fear. It's irrational. If there was no fear, there would be no fence, there would be no gate, there would be no locks. The fear What is this potential? Where can we take this? How deep can we take this? My most terrifying thing that I, that I think is my most terrifying thing is my dad my relationship with my dad. Tim, how you doing, man? Hey, Dad, I love you. Although that's not necessarily true, I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid of opening up to you because I experienced all of my first experiences with you. A lot of them, anyway. And you scared me when I was a kid, and I didn't even, I didn't ever realize it before, but you scared me. You scared me. All the little things that you did, all the little walls that you put up, subconsciously they scared me and I did the same thing that I mirrored them back at you you know you 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 thought that you had to take care of me and what what that did is you started to placate me emotionally as does all as do all human beings without realizing it you know people say just make someone laugh just make them laugh you know help them out make them laugh it's not helping someone out Helping someone out is listening to them and talking to them and not having any walls up and not trying to heighten the situation, just existing with someone. That's love. And uh, Dad, I think that we will have an amazing relationship. I'm glad you guys got a webcam now. Now we got to figure out how to fix the compression rate on it so that it's flowing. Or maybe you got to get a new computer. I don't know. I hate to see you have to buy a new computer. I've always been afraid of opening up to you. That conversation I had with you that one day, I was driving in the car in the desert, driving to Palm, Palm Springs, talking to you for like 40 minutes. That was, that was amazing to me. That was amazing for me. I was horrified of it. And I, I could hear the fear in your voice. I could hear when you wanted to give the phone off. That's another thing, man. Stop giving the phone off. When I start opening up to you, don't give the phone off. Just listen. Just let it happen. I'm not... I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? We, we get to know each other. We, we drop our walls a little, and it's going to affect our relationship with everyone else because, like, our relationship is so important. My relationship with you is so important because it's how I, kind of how I view all my other relationships in a way. I think that's why I had was closed off my whole life. Well, who's not? But yeah, that's why, is because my relationship with you is closed off, as is every person with their dad or their mom. I mean, it's, it's, it was unavoidable. I don't know that it's unavoidable anymore now that we know, now that I know, now that I realize this. I think that we can open up. Always. I think we can get to a point where we don't have to try to open up anymore. <sighs> in the virtual reality. In the physical reality, perhaps it's just the human curse. We're cursed to be afraid of each other. I know that the more time I spend on video on YouTube, the more comfortable I feel. The more time I, I communicate with people on YouTube and like say these things that I'm afraid to say, 
the easier it gets to communicate with people in my physical reality. So it is like training. This body, man, it just clouds us. It doesn't want the consciousness to open up. It doesn't want the consciousness to create the conduit. So it creates all this fear, irrational fear. Fear of nothing in particular. Fear of stupid shit. Like you're gonna lose your house or someone's gonna leave you. Like people aren't gonna leave us. No one's gonna leave me. People are gonna be around me if I communicate with them. People don't leave you if you communicate with them. People leave when you isolate. They, they reflect back what you're giving. If you give isolation, they will give isolation. But it starts here, in our minds. It starts here, what our reality is. It begins here. We feed it, and then that's what it becomes. We feed it anything that we want. We feed it open behavior, and then that's what it becomes. This world is amazing to me. My relationships are fucking amazing. Amazing. I have never, ever experienced anything like this in my life. Ever. Ever. I've never seen it. I've never thought it was... I had no idea it existed. I didn't understand. I didn't even begin to understand what it meant to open up. I didn't realize it was an active thing. I didn't realize it was something that we had to fight our bodies to do. But it is. And I'm telling you that our consciousness will win every time. Our consciousness has complete control of our body. Everything exists in our mind. I'm going to watch this video now and, and let it affect me. I'll, I'll talk to you guys soon. See you.